go. We are live. All right, Sebastian, we're just gonna give you a bath today. It's not even gonna be the full haircut. Okay, so. Hey everyone. So this is my friend Sebastian. Let me see if I can bring this table a little closer. Oh, hey, Ava. <laughs> uh, hey, Carmen. Hi, Laura. Hi, hey, Nicole. Okay, so this is my friend Sebastian, and uh, I, I've already given him a haircut, but uh, recently, <laughs> but we're going to give him a, a bath today. <clears throat> there we go. So um, I just got him on the table. First thing I'm going to do is run the comb through him. And it shouldn't take me too long, and there shouldn't be a lot coming out, because, um, like I said, I also I already recently groomed him, so see that? Very little coming out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and check real quick. <clears throat> and this is also, even if he doesn't really need to be combed, it just helps separate the hairs. It makes his coat feel a lot softer, and that way. The shampoo, you know, will lather a lot better, will get a better rinse, he'll dry a lot faster. So even though I'm not actually carting hair out, even though no hair, not a lot of hair is coming out, see how much softer the coat feels compared to this side? See that? So we just wanna kinda of separate everything and make the coat nice and soft. And that way, <clears throat> when we wash him, the shampoo and conditioner and everything will you know, work much better. Uh, Laura says, oh, where we go? There we go. Uh, Carmen says, he is cute. Yeah, he is. Jay Moore, what's up? What's up, gangster groomer? <laughs> no, I'm <just> kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, Laura says, I need new shampoo for my three dogs. Um, Laura, right now, I'm using uh, Bark Logic. But hey, shout out to Joshua Morales. Josh represents Hydra or Hydra. It's spelled Hydra, <clears throat> but I think they say it Hydra because, you know, I guess they want to be fancy. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, I, I guess that's a good line. Um, Josh could tell you more. Uh, but right now I'm using a shampoo called Bark Logic. So, um, but for me, honestly, as long as you're using a decent shampoo, um, really, this is you know, the real secret. For me, brushing is much more important than bathing. And this combing out process before the bath, this is what's gonna give me all the great results. It's not a shampoo product. And you know, even if there was a shampoo product out there that could magically get this coat all combed out and nice and soft for me, you know, cause we are still getting a little bit and the coat is feeling much softer. But even if there was a shampoo that would just do this for me, so I wouldn't have to do this, I don't think I would want it, you know? <laughs> because what if that shampoo company all of a sudden jacks up their prices and now I can't buy, now I can't afford the shampoo, or they go out of business, or whatever happens. I don't wanna ever rely too much on one product or one tool, you know? And that way, even if that product or tool is not available to me, I can still complete the groom and still get a great finish, you know, because I'm not, depending on one product or tool or anything. If I didn't have this comb, I'd use another comb. If I didn't have that comb, I'd use another tool. If I didn't have any tools on me, I'd use my fingertips. If my fingers were broken, I'd use my teeth. <laughs> you know, I, so for me, don't get caught up. <laughs> Speaking of using, one time, <clears throat> one time um, I go out to my car one morning all of my tools are stolen out of my car, right? My bag's gone. And so <laughs> I was freaking out. I had a client that day, and <laughs> the first thought that came to my mind, I was like, am I seriously gonna have to use my teeth today? <laughs> like, I, I said it, I've said it before, you know, so maybe today I gotta put my money where my mouth is, you know? <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, who's that? Shamika, hey, what's up, Shamika? 
Uh, Carmen says she's a, she agrees. <laughs> Laura. Amanda, I just got my first bathing job on my way to being a groomer. I start Thursday. Yes, awesome. Uh, please pray for me. <laughs> Let's see. Shimika, Carmen, all right. Caught up on the questions and comments. And look how fast this is going. Usually it would take me like 15 minutes or so just on one section. But, you know, I'm just flying through. And so because the thing is, a good groom always stands the test of time. You know, if I didn't do such a thorough job before, then when I came here today, um, you know, there would be a lot more work involved for me. It wouldn't be this easy to just comb him out like this. The comb's just literally sliding through like butter. Uh, it's getting caught in a couple places, but that's, these are the high friction areas. It's expected. But yeah, a good groom always stands the test of time. If you pick up your dog from the groomer, and in about three days, they start to smell, you know, that, that um, kind of, what do you call that? Like just nasty wet dog smell. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry about that, buddy. But uh, so I, I got a little piece right here. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Sebastian. <clears throat> Where was I? That kind of surprised me. <laughs> but um, yeah, oh yeah, if you pick your dog up and after a few days, you know, of course, when you pick them, uh, when you pick your dog up from the groomers, the very first day they're gonna smell like cologne or whatever, you know, they're gonna smell, they're gonna smell like a, a French whorehouse. <laughs> Especially if they're trying to cover up that nasty rank smell that they didn't comb out. Um, your dog usually is gonna smell like somebody just dumped a bottle of cologne on them. But then after about two, three days, all of a sudden they still start to, I'm sorry about that, Sebastian. They start to smell funky again, right? And that's because that groomer took shortcuts. Or maybe, maybe they did the best they could, but they didn't do a thorough good job. And so that's why it doesn't stand the test of time. Let's see here. Uh, Amanda. Oh, what, <clears throat> Jennifer L., what breed is your little friend? Still looking for a dog. So <laughs> he is supposed to be a Bichon. Um, they bought him from, they got him from a Bichon breeder, but he looks like a Maltese to me. So <laughs> the last time I streamed him, I kind of explained, gave the example of if I was born in Italy and I honestly considered myself Italian because I'm an Italian citizen and someone asked me, hey, you know, what nationality are you? I'd be like, I'm Italian, right? <laughs> and they'll be like, uh, no, I mean, but where are your parents from? I'd be like, they're from Italy. You know, we all grew up in Italy. I'm Italian. They'd be like, I know, but I mean, where's your, you know? I mean, obviously they're trying to get to which Asian country I'm from, right? Um, but yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> so maybe he was born in a Bijan family, but he looks like a Maltese. Just like if I was born Italian, but I look Asian. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Amanda says, thank you, I've learned a lot. Oh, thank you. Grooms by Nicole, congratulations. Amanda, you'll do great. Sky Art, what's up, Rachel? Josh Morales, little pep in his step. <laughs> a good groom is first a good bather. Exactly, exactly. A, a really good groomer is actually a really good comber <laughs> or brusher. He was gonna get you, June. <laughs> he, he could try, but my kung fu is too strong. <laughs> no, it's <I was> kidding. <laughs> uh, Yes, that's what I thought he was. Yeah, he, so the, he's a Bichon, but he looks like a Maltese, has Maltese type hair. Um, thank you for your warmth, Carmen and Nicole. I'm ready for the hard work. Exactly, and it is gonna be hard work, just, just to let you know. Um, and you want it to be hard. That's why it's so rewarding. You don't want it to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. He's a trooper, he's not afraid to speak up. <laughs> he actually, he used to, like, maybe he's not doing it because his family, nobody's here, and, which is why I decided to stream this as well, because no one's here. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I value my clients' trust in me so much. Um, we even asked our clients, would it, would it be okay if I hired someone, you know, to help me out, to, to kind of get these grooms done faster? And we stopped asking our clients because almost all of them were saying, like, uh... We don't really feel comfortable with it, you know, because I just come by when no one's here, you know. 
Um, and well, I don't know if they, these, uh, this house here answer, but anyways, a lot of them were telling me like, you know, we trust you, you know, if you need to bring someone in, you know, but they just saying like, could we meet them first? We're not really comfortable with it. So yeah, you know, we decided, I guess I'm not gonna hire anybody because what I have now is good enough and I'm happy and I'm busy. I have more dogs than I can actually, um, you know, service. And so, you know, I'm good, I'm good. <clears throat> I don't need any, any more than this. Okay, let's see. La Unica, oh, what's up? You spoiled them. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, but yeah. So I, for me, uh, someone's trust in me is priceless and I don't wanna ever do anything to mess that up because really, um, especially when they're saying like, we trust your judgment, we trust you, you know? <laughs> it really helped, like, kind of made me realize, oh my God, my reputation's on the line. You know, if I get the wrong person in these homes, you know, I can't follow them to the bathroom. You know, what if they say, hey, I gotta go up to the bathroom. And I can't follow them up to the bathroom and watch them. I mean, I guess I could, but that'd be kind of weird. So, you know, just so many things could happen. And some of my clients, uh, they live in some really, really nice places. I'm just gonna be honest, it's like mansions and they give me the gate code, I just walk in their house. So that type of trust, I don't think it's transferable, you know? Just like relationships are not transferable, neither is trust. So I just don't see myself um, risking losing my client's trust in me just because I'm trying to make more money. And you know, really that's what it would be like. If something happened, let's say they stole something, you know, something like family heirloom or something. And my client asked me, why did you bring this guy in? Why did you, you know, why? Did... My answer would have to be honestly, because I was trying to make more money. And I, I just can't live with that. So. There we go. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but on Instagram, like I think it was last week, he, right here was all bald. It was all bald and red because literally so much dead hair just combed out. It just literally combed out. But now, let's see that? It's already growing back because once all that dead, nasty hair is out of there and the skin is now clear and it has a nice environment to function, the skin now starts to grow the nice fresh hair and that, that new hair stays nice and clean. It doesn't get all brown and, and funky because it's actually live hairs <laughs> that are sealed, has oils on them to protect them and you know, repel off the moisture and bacteria. There we go. Oh, you know what? Just so it's not so boring, <laughs> I'll explain what I'm doing here. So, when I'm combing, I'm always keeping in mind the natural shape of the dog. So here, I'm gonna go down here like that. <clears throat> oh, good night everyone from Greece, it's 2 a.m. Fine then, Garf, Garf, Glio, go then, fine. Who needs you anymore? <laughs> Just go, just go, Garfigio. I don't care if it's 2 a.m. <laughs> Laura, hey, Laura. Yeah, so Laura, if you were following me on Instagram, you remember that? Um, I was explaining why it was so like kind of bald and red right there. Look at that, it's starting to already grow in. Carmen, <laughs> Carmen says, good night, Garfigio. <laughs> that, was, that was a much better response, Carmen. <laughs> well said, Jean, trust is everything. Yes, Mika, perfect. Have you ever used Thumbtack to get new clients? No, I, I, I actually have a waiting list. Uh, my waiting list is maxed out. Um, I don't take new clients <laughs> at all. Um, we actually did a price increase. Well, it's, it goes into effect next month. Um, and I, I was for sure because we raised the prices like 40, some of them we raised to $60, you know, and that's a huge jump. 
when someone was paying like 80 bucks and now they got to pay like 140, you know, that's, that's a big difference. So, um, I was, I was, uh, not, you know, deluding, deluding myself into thinking like, I'm so great that everybody's going to stick with me. I knew, I knew we were going to lose a lot of clients, but we didn't. <laughs> we only lost one. I thought we lost two, but he actually emailed back and, uh, he was just confused about the new policies. Um, but yeah, he's, he's still on board. So we actually only lost one client. So, <laughs> and so we had 14 dogs on our waiting list, uh, 12 clients, 12 potential clients, 14 dogs on our waiting list. Um, so we contacted a few of them because, you know, we, we had, we thought we had two spaces available. Um, but yeah, it's, so our waiting list is still maxed out. Um, but yeah, just, it, for me, I feel so lucky because now I don't have to worry about getting new clients. All I have to focus on now is serving my clients better. The clients that I already have, how do I serve them better? You know, how do I make them even more happy? You know, I don't have to, just like Seth Godin says, he stopped writing to get new, new readers. He started writing for his readers. So I don't look for new clients. I just try to serve the clients I already have the best I can to the best of my ability. Um, dang, my clients freaked out about $5 price increase. <laughs> by Nicole. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And it was, it was a little scary. So, I mean, I knew um, that we were going to have a little bit of a fallout. But, I mean, one, one person fell off? Come on. <laughs> what about doing some type of informational class to make money? Uh, I get. The thing is, I don't want to... I don't want to share information to try to make money. Um, I feel like information should be free. Um, now, if you were to call me over to your house and ask me to do, you know, not, not just show you how to do it, but actually do it, now I'm giving you my service. And so I would, I would charge for that. But because information is for everyone, it should be free. I don't want to charge for it. Um, the best example I can give is Paul, St. Paul. He never charged the church. He never asked the church for money to, for any of his letters that he wrote from jail, from prison, or any of the sermons that he gave. Paul never asked the church to pay him for it. it what, you know what he did to make money? He made tents. Paul was a tent maker by trade, and he would share his truth to try to make an impact, to try to make a difference in the world. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm St. Paul, but he is a hero of mine. And so, yeah, I mean, I draw inspiration from that. Exactly, Carmen, he is a tent maker. And so, yeah, um, this is, and, and what is a tent maker? He's, he's making something. He's, he's actually give, being of service and providing some, something that people actually need. Because back then, the, you know, people lived in tents, you know. So he was providing shelter. He was providing a necessary service for people. And that's how he earned his income. Now, he shared his truth so that he can try to make a difference in people's lives. And so that's how, that's my philosophy on it. So he preached, he preached and worked, exactly. So yeah, um, my wife and I are actually planning on doing some workshops, some live workshops, but we're gonna try to do it at local libraries for free for pet owners. And then we'll stream it live on YouTube and. Um, so that way, you know, more people can benefit, I guess, from what I have to share, my experiences, you know, my little bag of experiences I've collected over the past decade. But um, yeah, that's what we're trying to, we're, that's what we're going to plan on doing. Um, I still have to work up the courage to go to the library and ask them. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, I kept, I kept telling myself, like, why am I so scared to ask the library? if I could do a free workshop to help, you know, pet owners with their dog rooms, you know, it's like, wh why would the library say no, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, they would probably like it, right? I would think, but, you know, still that little insecurity, that self-doubt, every time we go to the library, <laughs> I start, my heart starts beating fast, just the thought of going up to the library and asking if I could do a free workshop. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, that's my plan is once I work up the courage <laughs> um, and if a library will let me, then I'm going to start doing free workshops for pet owners at the libraries and then we're going to stream it on YouTube and that way 
the information will be free for everyone. And that's how it should be, right? Well, I, I'm trying not to use the word should anymore because, you know, we could should all over ourselves, <laughs> like Tony Robbins says. But, um, you know, it's something I could do, right? It's something I could do. All right. So we're going through the code. See, we're still getting out a good bit, you know? But nothing like the last time I groomed him because the last time I groomed him, we probably went, um, you know, anywhere between four to six weeks. But I groomed him just like last week, I think. So, there we go. Good boy, Sebastian. Alrighty, so, let me see. I see some comments coming in. <clears throat> um, Okay, whoa, wow, there's a lot that came in. Leslie Leon, gre greetings from Peru. I really admire your work, thank you. What about some type of, okay, I saw that. Shimika, I agree with Laura. Carmen says, I like the way you think. And yes, he was a tape maker. Just, just have to love your passion, June. Oh, thank you, Shimika. Um, Carmen says, he preached and worked. Yep, I saw that one. Nikki Hammond, June, I truly admire you. Your philosophy and wisdom is pro. Thank you, <laughs> Nikki, oh my goodness. I guess, I guess that's the result of making so many mistakes. <laughs> you know, after a while, it's like, oh, okay. Um, Carmen, can I take a peek in, at your bag? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, here's a peek right now. Uh, this is a great idea. Partner with the rescue for free workshop too. That's a good idea too. Maybe a partner up with the rescue shelter. Um, that's an idea. Alrighty. So let me put this over here actually so we can get a good view of Sebastian. Wow, so just that right there already. Oh my goodness, he feels so soft and silky, like a little rabbit, like rabbit fur. Okay, so as you can see, now that I've got him all combed out and his, he, he's already feeling so soft and smooth and silky, uh, everything's gonna be pretty easy from here, you know? He's gonna lather up easy. He's gonna rinse easy. He's gonna dry in no time. And then I'm just gonna, you know, kind of scissor up a little bit of the sticky outies. And sticky outies is the technical grooming term. It means hairs that stick out. <laughs> so, mm. Laura X, adios dude. Hashtag, adios, are you leaving? Fine, Laura, get out of here, go. Just, just take it and go. <laughs> Even Sebastian <laughs> looked at me like, dude, you're gonna use that same joke? <laughs> but anyways, what I meant to say, Laura, <laughs> is thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Probably, probably people's dinner time, you know? And I'm like, fine then, go. <laughs> Get an attitude. <laughs> okay. There we go. Alrighty, so now he, that he's all combed out, head to toe, toe I've, I've pretty much covered every square inch. Oh, except for this back leg right here. There's a few uh, tangles and mats, little, little pin mats here. There we go. Here you, Sebastian. There you go. Okay. Okay. There we go. Good boy. So now all these little, little tiny pin mats are out. <coughs> now, what I'm gonna do now is uh, do his close shaving. Let's see. Sebastian is cranky. Nah, he's not really cranky. <laughs> uh, Leslie, I have my Maltese next to me. I'll start grooming her along with, nah, thank you. Awesome, we'll start grooming together. But yeah, uh, Sebastian, 
he used to like uh, cry and whine and just sing, you know, just howl, you know, but now he's actually doing much, much better. He's just, grooming is not his favorite activity. <laughs> so. I'm gonna get my wall deluxe U-clip. Check that. Oh, what's up, Maggie from Florida? What's up, Maggie? So I'm gonna use my ultra fancy wall deluxe U-clip. Um, now, I don't want anybody to get jealous or envious of the, the kind of equipment that I have. Not everybody can use you know the best kind of stuff like I do. This is gonna run you about 40 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I got it for 36, you know, but. When you're a groomer, like a professional like me, you gotta get fans. <laughs> this is probably one of the cheapest clippers I've found so far. Um, <clears throat> All right. But the reason why I'm using these, actually, uh, my wife, we, my, I, I was using like a hundred twenty dollar pair of Andes, well, actually one forty. Um, but any, um, it, it broke on me, and then. It, it was pretty much, I, I can't even remember how many Andes clippers I've, got, I've gone through. So, and it's just the clippers that I started with, so I just got used to it. But I've just gone through too many Andes clippers, and so I told my wife, you know, this time, let's try something else. Let's try another brand. Um, I was just ordering Andes just because I was used to it, but <clears throat> I was like, I think I'm ready to try some, some other you know, brand. And so we were thinking, should we get Oster? You know, should we try Wall? You know, should we try, you know, some no-name generic clippers? And then my wife was like, um, and we were talking while I was driving the car. So my wife asked me, like, on the phone, hey, honey, like, you always tell people that the clippers don't matter and the tools don't matter. You could just get, like, the cheapest pair as long as you do a good prep job, you know? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, well, then why don't we try to prove that and actually put it to the test, and I'll just, find, I'll just buy the cheapest clippers I can find. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, okay, right, let's do it. You know, it sounded kind of fun. So she ordered, she shows me this, you know, she's like, I ordered it, it's $36, it's the cheapest pair I could find online. And the very first dog that I groomed with it, I'll be honest, I was feeling pretty anxious. Um, I was a little nervous. I didn't know <laughs> if I was going to be able to actually pull it off and, and uh, provide the same, uh, you know, quality finish haircut. Um, but yeah, surprise, surprise. <laughs> All right. All righty. <clears throat> so, me personally, any, any groomer that pushes a product or a tool too hard it always makes me question their true motives. <clears throat> and I'm just being real. Uh, what breed is that? So this is uh, Bijan, but I think he looks like a Maltese. <laughs> um, Carmen, wall clippers are awesome. Okay, let's go back here. <clears throat> is it heavy? No, it's actually not that heavy. And it's actually pretty quiet too. I like the five and one speed. Yeah, I do. I like them too. Wall clippers are awesome. Got fed up with Andes too. Exactly, Nicole. Andes, just my personal prediction, but I'm thinking in the next five to 10 years, Andes is going to go out of business because just their practices, the way they approach me even, um, just a lot of the stuff they do, it just, it doesn't feel human. <laughs> it feels like they've totally taken the human aspect out of it. And you can... It's like, can you make it any more obvious that you're just trying to make more money, Andes? Anyways, I love Andes, they're light. Yeah, they're light, <clears throat> but they break so easy. And also the blade drive that, that Andes use. Now, I don't know this for sure, because I haven't gone to the manufacturing plant or you know, confirmed it with my, my, my own eyes, but a lot of groomers, a lot of the old school groomers even, groomers that have been grooming like 20, 20 years or more, they've been saying, they've been telling me that the Andes changed their blade drive. It used to be a lot sturdier, and now it's flimsy. They made it cheap. They made it cheaper so that it would break faster, so that you would have to buy more blade drives or buy more clippers. It's like, wow, that's so. I don't know. 
<clears throat> but I mean, whatever. Do what you gotta do, Andy's. Make that money. Uh, hi, June. I'm grooming my first Bijan Freeze, Freeze A groom at college today. Awesome. Good to catch you live. Thank you. Switch to Artero blades too. Okay, I gotta try. I gotta try Artero. <clears throat> I didn't know they made blades. I ha Carmen says I had. I have had mine for ten years. I fixed my own. Sure, yeah. Exactly. I've been. At least like I'm constantly repairing my Andy's clippers, and then I get just get fed up with it. And then the the power cord, you know, if you like tilt it a certain angle, it you know the that, the power just gives out. So, anyways, I just got fed up with Andy's. They totally did change it. I used to have a metal piece, but now it's completely exactly exactly. So. You know, Andy's, I don't know, maybe you're still doing business. If, if anybody from Andy's is watching this or ever, you know, maybe you're still doing business like we did in the 80s, you know, and you bombard people with commercials and you interrupt their lives and things like that. But hey, we're in a new generation. This is a new era. We're in the generosity economy. We're in the connection economy. You know, it's about making connections. It's about being real. It's about making these real relationships and being honest with the people who are supporting you and being honest with the people who are buying your products. That's the age that we're in right now. And with social media and so much information out there, I mean, you know, it's, it's really sad to see Andy's doing business like that. Leslie, I groom my dog myself. I'm not a groomer at all. She's a nightmare for groomers. I think she was mistreated once because she came with the red eye. Ooh, but she's still scared when I do it. Any tips? Sorry. No, your English is great. Leslie, um, just be patient. Just be patient. That's, that's the best tip I can give you. Just be patient. And um, take your time. You know, grooming is it's not a race. You know, it's not about who, how fast we can get it done. What is the name of the clippers you have? It's a wall. Oh, let me put this down. It's a wall deluxe U-clip. U-clip. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a, but I'm not saying to buy it. I'm not saying to get these clippers. I mean, I was just trying to prove a point that the clippers don't really matter. You know, by, by buying the cheapest clippers I could find, it, it could have been any brand. I didn't care. I just wanted to find the cheapest clippers I could find and still groom my client's dogs with it and still produce the same results just to prove a point that it's not about the tools. Alrighty, so... We'll get him in the tub. So, <clears throat> one second. Oh. Okay, you know what? <clears throat> Maybe so I can see the comments coming in. I'll turn it like that. There we go. You're all right, Sebastian. He's not really looking forward to <laughs> bath time here. Carmen says, okay, perfect. Alrighty, so you know what? I'm not gonna be able to see the comments coming in anyway, so I'll just do it like this. All right, so. Oh. Sorry, having some like technical difficulties here. Uh, no need, no, I need backup. My cord is broken. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. Oh, Sebastian. You're such a good boy. Alrighty. So, what I like to do is I like to use the lowest pressure possible, you know, while because I don't like to blast their skin, you know, overstimulate it. I know some people love the high pressure, but if you've already done a good job combing everything out, you really don't need the water to blast them like that. <laughs> You know, their skin is very sensitive. Um, it's very thin. So for me, the more the gen, the you know, the more gentle we can be with their skin, the better. So I always like to test the water temperature as well, the water pressure on this part of you know this soft part of my hand arm there. Not this side, but this side, because it's more sensitive. So I can get a little bit more better idea of what it's gonna feel like for the dog. So. There we go, make it a little cooler, because it's a little bit too warm. Perfect, and so then I'm gonna get him all wet. And we go to the skin. There we go. Good boy. Just 
go a little bit too warm. There we go. So you see how I'm uh, spraying his, his coat down with the water? I'm using his natural angles. So right here, I'm gonna go this way, then I'm gonna go forward this way, and then back that way. And then along his body, I'm gonna make sure it's diagonal, right? Same thing on this side. Go backwards, and then forwards, and then backwards again. See that? So you're, you're, you're going, following this natural, the natural angles of the dog. Now on the front, we're gonna do the same thing. Here I'm gonna go back, but then right as I meet the neck here, the back of the neck, I'm gonna start spraying forward. And then diagonally down into the chest, like that. But then once I get here to this shoulder blade, I'm gonna start pointing back again, right? And then here I'm gonna go forward. So it's, it's the natural angles of the dog that you're trying to um, just constantly re-establish, re you know, <laughs> you're training the hair. So everything you do, everything you do, you're just um, encouraging the hair to lay along with the natural angles of the dog. That way, he just looks beautiful effortlessly, you know? And even when he walks or runs, it'll look like he's floating, you know? It'll look like he, he's, he's running effortlessly. Even when he's standing still, he's gonna look beautiful like a statue because all the hairs are, you know, all the hairs are laying um, with how they're supposed to lay naturally. Now, for the face, what I like to do is I like to put my hand um, over his, his nose like that. And that way when I go over his nose, it's, it's not gonna get into his nostrils. My hand's covering it. And then I go back and cover his ear, right? So that his water can't go in his ear. Now I'll do the same thing to the other side. There we go. Cover the, the ear canal with my thumb or you know, whichever finger is, <laughs> is easiest. But you wanna cover that ear hole, that way he doesn't ha get you know, water in his ears. There we go. So you're not just, you're not just rinse, you know, putting the water on him and just, just spraying water on him any kind of way. You know, it's, you're, you're working the natural angles. So now what I like to do is I like to try to get the shampoo on the butt here first, because this is where most of the smell is gonna come from. Now, and then under the, in between the legs here, the thighs, because if you notice here, there's a lot less hair here, right? And that means that that's the area of the skin, they call it the sebaceous zones. That's where they're producing most of their oils. And so that's where most of the smell and kind of, you know, greasiness is gonna come from. So I want the most contact time there so that the shampoo has the longest time to work there. All right? And then, oh, so this is the shampoo I've been using. And then, get his armpits. And then lastly, I wanna get his ears. I got too much shampoo, there we go. See, now his ears again, see how there's a lot less hair in his ears than anywhere else, right? It's a sebaceous zone. There's more oils being produced here than hair. So again, a lot of times when you smell your dog, some un unpleasant odors will be coming from the ears. So again, I want the shampoo to have the most contact time with these sebaceous zones. There you go, buddy. Oh, thank you, Sebastian. There we go. I wanna keep the shampoo out of his eyes. There we go. Can you guys see? There we go. So you wanna avoid the eyes. But let's say shampoo kind of gets in the eyes. I like to just kind of sweep like that and then use my thumb on this side here 
and just sweep, sweep, you know? If there's shampoo in the eyes, but otherwise, I like to just kind of avoid the eyes. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> now, it's not our hand scrubbing like that. It's not our hand scrubbing that's gonna get him clean. It's actually the contact time that the shampoo has. So I'm not gonna start rinsing him as soon as I get him all lathered up because uh, if, we, if we just start rinsing him as soon as the shampoo is lathered in his body, uh, it, it, you haven't given the shampoo enough time to work, to do what it's supposed to do. So it's, it's not gonna give you an effective groom. It's not gonna give you an effective bath. He's, not, he's gonna smell in a few days because the shampoo didn't have time to actually attach itself to the dirt molecules and the grease and grime. And that's exactly what's happening with this contact time. Of course, I'm gonna kind of massage it in, lather it in, but I'm not scrubbing, you know? First of all, scrubbing a dog, um, especially when their skin is wet like this, not a good idea, because again, their skin is so sensitive and so thin that it could overstimulate the skin and irritate it, cause it to turn red and, you know, raw. So you don't want to scrub when they're wet, especially when they're wet. Just want to gently massage it in. Mm. <laughs> and then once it's in, I like to massage them gently, you know, use my hands like that. Just because we got to pass the time somehow, you know? I could sit, we could sit here and look at each other, you know, lovingly staring at each other's eyes <laughs> for five minutes, or I can get to work, you know, and actually just gently massage him, you know, so you can actually enjoy the experience. Oh, good boy, Sebastian. But you got to stay in, oh, I'm sorry. You got to stay in the tub, buddy. There you go, okay. Don't make me look bad, buddy. We're streaming live, don't make me. <laughs> But yeah, so here's what's happening. The shampoo is attaching itself to the dirt molecules, the, gr the grease and the grime, and it needs time to do that. But once it's attached itself, once it has time to make that chemical bond, then when we rinse the shampoo off the dog, that's when the cleaning actually happens. Because when we're rinsing the shampoo off, hey, Daisy like the flower. Uh, when we're rinsing the shampoo off the dog, the, you know, along with the shampoo, goes all that dirt and everything that um, the shampoo has attached itself to. So that's how shampoo works. <laughs> so, you know, knowing that, I, I actually take longer showers now. <laughs> um, it's helped me so much because I actually used to lather myself up and then rinse. I would, I would start rinsing the, the soap off my body as soon as I get my whole body lathered. Now that learning this with the dogs, um, the way I take showers has changed. <laughs> now I actually turn the water off. I use a, you know, a, like exfoliating, you know, a scrub um, to work the shampoo all over my body. And then I just, I, I sit there and I, <laughs> I marinate in it, <laughs> you know. I let the, sh I let the soap um, have the time that it needs to get my skin clean. And so now my showers have actually um, taken much longer now. I don't take quick showers anymore. But yeah, it's like, once we know more, we can do better, you know? Once we know better, we can do better. But, you know, we do the best with what we know, um, which is why I think it's so good to always be open to new information um, and be open to change. Because yeah, I mean, I can tell a huge difference. And my hair, my hair health, the way my skin looks, everything um, has gotten better because I've slowed down, you know? <laughs> LOL, marinated June. <laughs> exactly, I marinate in it. <laughs> uh, LL, LLJL. Wow, you're not, you're not uh, related to LL Cool J, are you? LLJL. You're not LL, LL Cool J's cousin, are you? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Anyways. Okay. Alrighty, so while I let him sit. Oh. Let me check the comments that came in that I didn't get to. So we're just gonna let him uh, sit just for a little bit. We're gonna let him marinate in it. <laughs> okay. So, oh my goodness. Okay, let's see here. Um, wow, lots of comments came in. Okay. 
Uh, Shimika, oh, he's such a good fur baby. He's clearly enjoying the bath. Yeah, kind of. He doesn't really like it. And I think he would jump out if I let him. But, you know, we can't have a soapy dog running around the house. Okay. Love that sink. Yeah, I love it too. I told my hubby, I want to change my double sink for the one like that. Yeah, I love these big sinks. Yes, my dog, my dog bath sink. Yes, I need my dog bath sink rather than my kitchen. <laughs> Oops, Toby stepped on my iPad, then my kitchen for cooking sink. <laughs> okay, LLJL says, we need a June here in Bakersville, California. I would pay X. Oh, thank you, LLJL. Um, Daisy liked the flower, and then Les Leslie says, my dog does that. She is not trying to hug me. She wants to escape. Yeah, he was probably trying to escape too. I just turned it into a hug. <laughs> uh, but yeah, LLJL. <laughs> But yeah, if you if you are related to LL Cool J in any way, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Whoa. You gotta stay in there, buddy. There we go. Alrighty. Just wanna make sure. Uh, it kind of you, you can kind of feel like the brittle hair. It has a rougher texture to it, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of feeling that rough hair and just kind of gently pulling it out. There we go. And I'm not sure if it's been five minutes yet or not, but there we go. Get his feet. A lot of times when you massage a dog's foot, they really enjoy it because not a, you know, like, who doesn't like a good foot massage, right? But a lot of times, um, there's so much pressure and, and, you know, they put so much pressure, their feet are working all the time, just to give their feet a nice little gentle massage. A lot of times they really like that. Right, Sebastian? Okay. Oh, that soap with my hands. Um, if the dog is trembling while marinating, does it mean they're cold? No, a lot of times when they tremble, it's uh, because they want to get out or they don't like what's going on. And uh, you know, the trembling is like a, a physical manifestation of what they're feeling inside their head. And um, it's, it's actually a good thing. This is why animals don't really um, experience the anxiety and all the stress that we humans experience because they show it, they get it out, you know, they release it. Um, Eckhart Tolle in the book, uh, The Power of Now, he talks about how he was watching two ducks and um, one duck, um, I guess, went into the another duck's territory or something and they started fighting, they went at it, pow, 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 you know? And then after a brief moment of that fight, you know, they separated, they swam away from each other and they both flapped their wings, you know? And just to get that energy out and then they, Went, went about their business like it never happened, you know? So they, they were getting that, releasing that energy by flapping their wings, getting rid of that e negative energy, and then they were calm again. And then, um, I forget who, who gave the example, but they also gave the example of a gazelle. Like um, when you see a gazelle running away from a cheetah or something, um, they're obviously panicked, they're obviously stressed, right? Because a predator's chasing them, <laughs> about to kill them. But once they get away from the predator, once they outrun it or whatever, and the threat is gone, they'll shake, they'll shake, and then they'll go back to grazing. You know, what you won't see is they won't go up to a group of gazelles and say, oh my goodness, did you see that cheetah? Did you see that cheetah trying to get me? How rude, can you believe that? Who does he think he is? How dare he? Does he even know who I am? You know, <laughs> and then weeks later, months down the road, they're, they're still talking about it. That gazelle, you know, they get together, that darn cheetah, that's, you know, <laughs> they don't do that. And, or the ducks, you know, he doesn't swim away, flap his wings, swim away, and then go towards another group of ducks and say, can you believe that other duck? Can you, who does he think he is? He thinks he owns this whole lake? You know, <laughs> they don't do that. Humans do that, you know? And so I think a lot of times we, uh, humans, we have a lot to learn from animals, you know? Just to let it out and, and be honest about how you're feeling. He, he obviously, you know, doesn't really enjoy being in here. See him trembling? 
But that's the thing, it's like once we're out of here, once he's done, he doesn't really like the grooming either. The only part he actually does like is the haircut when I get the scissors out. And I think it's only because he knows he's pretty much done. But once he's done and I sit him down, he comes up to me and he, you know, he's, he's totally fine. He shakes it off, you know? So it's, I guess the lesson there is um, don't hold on to resentment or grudges. Just let it go, you know, um, just like the animals do. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. We're not really. Uh, sorry, I got, I got uh, soap on my hands. So I can't really. OK, there we go. Uh, Daisy like the flower. Do you use whitening shampoo? No. Um, I combed out the dead hair that is discolored and the new live hairs, uh, you know, the healthy live hairs have all that bright color in it. So I never use brightening shampoos or anything like that, but by combing them out first thoroughly and then just using a good shampoo, letting it sit, then all of a sudden the black looks blacker, you know, the white looks whiter. Um, Carmen, what are your thoughts on the Ferminator shampoo condition? I mean, yeah, I guess. I'll use it if I have it. <laughs> um, Shamika, how do you get rid of the tear stains? I brought tear remover for my burbies for my A. Okay, so tear stains. So like I was saying earlier, that's why his, uh, his eyes were so um, bald and kind of red last time I groomed him because it was all brown and nasty because all that dead hair was collecting, holding on to the moisture and the bacteria. But, uh, so what I suggest is combing out that area, right? Combing it out really good so that if I can get him to, there we go. So that the new hair will repel off the moisture and the bacteria causing that browning. All right, so let me go ahead and rinse him. Okay, Sebastian. Oops. Let's do it this way. There you go. Oh, Shamika, thanks, June. We'll do awesome. Yeah, give it a try, Shamika. And then also, what you could do is after you comb out, you know, and you know, cart out that dead hair in between the eyes, it it's gonna feel it's gonna feel like brittle to you. It's gonna feel um, like I felt right here. <laughs> I just pulled it out. That's why he was like, ah. But anyways, this is a sensitive area right there. Anyways, but um, after you comb out that hair, what you can try is using a very light layer of avocado oil or argan oil. Argan oil is kind of expensive though, especially if you, you know, you, you want 100% argan oil. So argan oil tends to be pricey. So avocado oil works just as good. Maybe not just as good, but you know, avocado oil works as well. Um, I don't suggest using coconut oil because coconut oil is just kind of heavier. Um, argan oil and avocado oil, they're very light, you know? So um, you want to use a very light layer of avocado oil and just gently smooth it you know right there over the dogs you know the bridge of there like in between the eyes where the browning is and that oil is going to not only protect that hair but it's also going to repel off you know the moisture and things like that and it's just going to keep it a lot cleaner for you but again you don't want to use a lot because then it's going to get yucky you want to use a very very light layer with oil the general rule is less is more so you always want to use less than what you think you'll need. Alrighty. Shamika, okay. Is that an okay? Like, all right, I got it. <laughs> Leslie, I see that some people pull the hair inside the ear. Is it really necessary to do it? Um, not all the time, but um, you know, like sometimes Bichons or Poodles, Marks, Maltese, these dogs that grow long hair, sometimes in that ear canal, you'll see like a plug of hair. Um, groomers call it brain hair because it literally looks like it's coming out of the brain. <laughs> it's really like, it's like, wow, it's that long of hair. But um, if there's no hair in, inside the ear canals, then I don't pluck. But if there's obviously hair blocking airflow into the ear canal, then I will pluck. And if, there, if the ear is really bad and it's clogged with hair and it's all you know, brown and nasty, then I will clean the ear and pluck. And I know a lot of people say, 
A lot of groomers disagree with that, and they say we should not pluck ears, especially if they look brown and nasty, because it could be an infection, and you'll make it worse. Um, Dr. St. Anji, he, ha he runs the Buckhaven Animal Clinic, um, the veterinary hospital, uh, but Dr. St. Anji here in Brookhaven, um, he told me that if the ear is already compromised, then why not clear it out and give it a better environment to heal itself, right? And for the um, ear cleaner and whatever, the medication to work better, he's saying with all of that hair plugged in there and it's brown and nasty and there's all that you know brown stuff in there, he was saying it's already compromised, right? The ear is already compromised. Let's go in there and clear it out so that now the ear is clean and it has a good environment to heal itself. So I, I to it made sense to me. I totally agree with Dr. St. Anji. So, um, from now on, I do clean ears, especially if they look, you know, really nasty. Okay. Now, if, the, if it looks, if it's more than just brown, and it, and it looks like there's obviously an infection in there, and there's kind of like red oozing stuff, then I won't. Then I'll send them straight to the vet, because um, the vets need to be able to test it. They need to be able to, you know, Put it under a microscope and you know run some tests on it and to see exactly what they're dealing with and so when it's really bad and it's like obviously infected then i will send them to the vet um, as is and i won't even touch the ears because then the vets will have something to swab you know something to test okay so see how he's trying to get out of the tub now but the thing is uh, they're like children from a different country that don't speak our language. So rather than say, no, 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 don't do that and stuff like that, he doesn't understand anyways. Well, he probably does, but you know. I just like to, with my body language, just gently keep him here, you know. There we go. So he knows that, no, I, you know, I understand you want to get out, but we can't just yet, you know. We got to make sure all the shampoo's out. There we go. So... A general rule of thumb when you're rinsing your dog is you want to rinse twice as long as it took you to lather them. Just to be sure that all the shampoo is actually out um, because if there's even a slight residue of shampoo left on his skin, he's going to start itching. You know, he's going to start itching, it's going to irritate the skin. It may even cause some infections, skin infections. So um, you want to make sure all of the shampoo is completely rinsed out everywhere, every square inch of the dog. And so the general rule of thumb would be to rinse for twice as long as it took you to lather. There we go. Oh my goodness, he feels so, so silky. Oh my goodness, smooth. Okay. And then I'll show you, I'll show you the move one more time. Just wanna do that, and that way, see that? It doesn't go in his nose, his, his nose is protected. There we go. Alrighty, and by doing that, by protecting his ears, protecting his nose, you know, keeping water from going in there. Oh, and I'll show you his ear canal. So. See how his ear looks nice and clean, and there's, no, there's not a lot of hair inside that ear canal preventing air from flowing. You can see right into the ear canal. That's really good. So I'm not gonna pluck any hair. There's no need to pluck. Alrighty. But that's not to say I haven't before. I've plucked hair out of his ears before. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> okay. Leslie, how do you feel about expressing the glands? Um, I will if they're full. Now, if his anal glands were obviously full, and the way you check is you lift up the tail, and here, around five and seven o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock, you know, these bottom corners, you'll, you'll see a little bulge. You'll see two little bulbs, like, bulge out, and you'll feel it. And if they're full, then I will express it. But when I feel it here, yeah, there might be some in there. If I squeezed hard enough, it might come out. 
but why, you know? <laughs> it's there for a reason. So, and also, um, in my experience, once you start expressing the anal glands every single time that you groom them, then it starts to get to the point where every four to six weeks or however long it is, their anal glands need expression, you know? Because it's a gland, you know? It's a gland and it's, 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 all, it's all, like already expressing itself every time they have a movement. So every time your dog goes number two, if you watch carefully, at the very end, they'll kind of, uh, a little drop, a little wet drop will you know, fall. That's their anal glands. And um, some people believe that it's to, you know, for communication purposes, kind of like Facebook posts, you know, <laughs> status updates. Because um, when dogs smell the poop of another dog, um, they're, not only, they're not only able to smell what that dog's um, regular diet uh, consists of, but they can also smell the way that dog was feeling. They, they smell emotions, isn't that amazing? And so, I mean, I'm, and I think this is a theory, maybe not have been, hasn't been proven yet, but they, they believe <clears throat> that dogs can actually smell um, how another dog was feeling when they leave that poo. So, you know, sometimes I see my dog Angel or, you know, she'll go in and smell poo, and my dog Dexter, especially my pit bull mix, you can see his head, he's just like that. He goes really into the poo, you know, and it's like because he's he's smelling <laughs> what that dog um, eats, how they feel, everything. Um, sometimes though he'll smell it and go, <laughs> you know, and maybe that dog was in a crappy mood. <laughs> That's kidding. Okay. Uh, Groomers by Nicole. I pull ear hair only when it is blocking the ear canal. Also, perfect. Until one of the vets I know and trust tells me not to do it, I'll keep it exactly. Uh, you bathe once or twice, just once, because he's so clean and feels so nice and smooth because of the combing that I did before the bath. So, and I feel like, you know, less is more. Um, every time we wash a dog, it's, it's sending a signal down to their skin, down to the dermal level, you know, not the hyperdermal. But anyways, um, you know, help, we're being attacked at the surface. So his, his skin is gonna react as if he, um, was just involved in like a hurricane or something, a typhoon just came by and <laughs> blasted his skin. So I feel like the less we can interfere with um, the natural flora of the dog's skin, the better. <clears throat> Is there any? Yes, okay, perfect. So now we'll dry him. So before I dry him, what I'm gonna do is while he's still wet, good boy. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some conditioner on them. The leave-in conditioner by Bark Logic, and this is vegan. <laughs> Leslie, so I can plug the hair myself, or would it be better for a professional to do it? Um, you could do it yourself. I don't think anyone's gonna stop you, but probably best for a professional to do it. Um, Aerie says, "Yay! I finally caught you live. Hey, what's up?" <laughs> Alrighty, you missed all the good parts though, Ari. Uh, I mean, from here on out, it's all downhill. I already shared like gems of information. Oh, man, too bad. That was <laughs> I'm just kidding. You haven't missed anything, Ari. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Probably like, click, I'm out. Okay. So again, these sebaceous zones, right? The ear has the most oils. So I'm gonna spray the ears first because I want the oils to be replenished in those pores, right? And that way, the skin doesn't go into too big of a shock, you know? Because we just washed out the oils out of his skin with the shampoo. So by replacing those oils in these sebaceous areas, the skin doesn't have to react so much, you know? It's like, oh, okay, we have oil. All right, so I guess, you know, it's not an emergency, you know? There we go. <clears throat> so then, once I spray the conditioner in, I like to kind of work it into the coat because rather than just immediately start drying it, it's good to give the conditioner a little time to set into the coat for the same reason why we wanna give the, the shampoo time to work, you know? So, um, this, there's a guy named Brendan Bouchard. Um, I follow him on Facebook, but uh, there's a post that he made that I really liked. He was saying that almost everything in life 
the answer is to slow down. You know, he was like, you, if you want to enjoy your meals better, slow down when you're eating. If you want to enjoy making love to your partner more, slow down. <laughs> you know, he was like, anything in life, if you want to enjoy it, the answer is to slow down. And so, yeah, for me, grooming is the same way. Um, you know, I, it's never my intention to get the groom done as fast as possible. You know, my intention is to do the best job possible. There we go. There we go. And see, I like to comb uh, the conditioner into the coat after the bath for several reasons. First, it, is, it helps spread the conditioner evenly throughout the coat and gives it time to set. <clears throat> Secondly, um, while the coat is wet and now that I got the conditioner in there, now the dead hairs that I missed before the bath, they come out much easier. See that? They come out much easier after the bath. So I'm just gonna comb the rest of the dead hairs that I may have missed before the bath. Oh, look at that, see that? While at the same time working the conditioner into a skin and coat, see that? And again, I'm using the same angles as I showed you when I was um, rinsing the dog. So right here, you wanna go like that, right? So it makes a nice little V shape for his chest, right? Like diagonal, like that, right? Now, <clears throat> when I go to his arms, here, so from, from the back of his neck to the front of his neck, I'm gonna go forwards, right? But then from here, from the point of his shoulder back, I'm gonna go back like this, 45 degree angle. So it's a diagonal, right? But then from here to here, I'm gonna go forward, like that. Then you can lift his arm, get under the armpit. But see, so I'm gonna be combing it diagonally, like that, 45 degree angle. Again, tra we're training the hair to lay nicely. Okay, so from here to here, they call this the ilium and the ischium, right? So from this point to this point here, it's a 30 degree angle. So we're gonna do 30 degrees. And then from here to here, so from this, the, the furthest bone out here to the, to the knee here is a 60 degree angle. So we're gonna go that way, like that, right? Forwards. <clears throat> and then from here, from the point of the knee back here, Obviously, his leg is going back now, so I'm gonna comb it back. See that? And then it's combed straight down. Okay. And then the tail, you don't wanna forget the tail. See that? You can feel like the bundles of dead hair because they grow in units, not single um, hairs like we grow. They actually grow in bundles and units, so you're okay, buddy. He, he just felt uh, <laughs> he just felt that hair coming out. Uh, let me see here. It's and it's not a lot. It's not a lot, but it's enough, right? Now we're gonna use the same angles on this other side. There we go. So because I comb thoroughly, my clients actually um, don't ever have to comb. And um, even if they don't comb and their dog gets a little matted, a little tangled up, um, every time I come, I kind of reset the coat for them so they can enjoy another several weeks, four to six weeks without having to worry about combing him. And they don't have to worry about his coat looking nasty or anything. So. It's, uh, it's my gift to my clients, you know, because artwork, any kind of art you do, there has to be an element of generosity to it, and that's what makes it art. So 
I feel like this is, um, this is what helps make my work art, not just grooming, you know? Because uh, Seth Godin, he points out that um, artists are not painters. A lot of times when we, when we see the word art or artist, what comes to mind is a painter, you know, someone who paints. <clears throat> He's saying you can be a painter and not an artist. Um, and you can be an artist, but you don't have to paint. And the difference is, there's a city in China called Dafin, a little village where um, he said 60% of all the oil paintings in the world are produced by the city in Dafin <laughs> by just random Chinese painters. And they're painters, they're not artists. Because what they're doing is they're just replicating paintings that other artists have created. And like you could buy the Mona Lisa for 30 bucks, but it's not the Mona Lisa, <laughs> it's a replica that a painter painted, not an artist. Um, and so another example he gives is that the first person who designed the urinal, they installed it at an art exhibit, and it was very controversial, people standing up and using the restroom. And it was the first of its kind. Now the second person to install a urinal, he was a plumber. The first person was an artist. He designed and created something new. He made a urinal. <laughs> but the second person, to install the urinal, he was a plumber, not an artist. So I believe that as groomers, as dog groomers, we have a choice. We can be groomers or we can be artists. And the difference is art has an element of generosity and vulnerability. Art says, here I made this for you, I hope you like it. Knowing that the other person can say no, we don't like it. We don't like you, <laughs> you know, and that's vulnerability. And that's what makes art so risky, but that's also what makes art so beautiful. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have the conditioner all combed in, alrighty. Uh, yay, oh, Daisy, do you force dry? What do you do with the dog that won't let you? I don't force dry anymore because my force dryer broke. <laughs> I use a hand dryer and I'll show you how I do that. Oh my June, everyone slow down, exactly. You know, what are, we, what are we in such a hurry for, you know? Once this life is over, that's it, you know? Take your time, slow down. All right, so. Okay, buddy. So, regular hand dryer. Um, what is this? Red, twirl line, I'm, I don't even know what brand it is. I don't even know what brand it is, but it's just a regular. So here we go. You know what? Just in case he decides he wants to pop off the table, <laughs> I'm gonna do like that. And so I like to use um, the lead like a harness, so not around the neck, because um, if I do it around the neck here, and he decides he's had enough, and he jumps off the table, this is gonna tighten up on his neck, right? So I like to do it on their shoulder, because let's be honest, dogs have a mind of their own, they really do, they have their own thoughts and feelings about things. So if he decides, okay, I'm out, peace out, and he jumps, at least it's gonna, it's gonna tighten up around his chest and shoulders, right? Still not a good thing, but at least it's better than, you know, strangling him. I'm glad I caught this. I didn't think there was anything, any I can learn regarding bath. Good information. I will test what I have learned uh, here. Oh, awesome, Carmen. All right, can you brush a dog? Can you, can you overbrush a dog? I comb my dog every day, but she still gets greasy looking. She's a Yorkie though. Yeah, terriers and Yorkies, um, they're known for that. But you can overbrush a dog in one sitting but I don't think you can overbrush them if you're like doing it every day, you know? Like, yeah, do it every day, you know?
see how fast he dried? Look how, look how fast he dried. It's all dry now, here at least. The areas that I did dry. Um, <clears throat> I want to be an art. Good, Carmen. Uh, I want to be an artist. I want to provide the best service possible. Exactly. Um, and I think that's why you're attracted to this channel and what I do, because you recognize something in me that's in you as well. Uh, Maggie, for the grease, I would pat the lightest amount of baking soda on my hands and kind of whoosh it through the top coat, then brush. Great idea, Maggie. Um, Lisa Moses, June, is that hot or cold air dryer? It's a uh, hot, well, it's warm. So I have it on the warm setting, and then I finish with the cool, with cool air. And then with the warm air, you wanna keep it moving. Now, the reason why I stopped is because I'm about to do his head and his legs. His head and legs is not very easy because he moves around, so I need both hands. So I'm gonna show you a technique that I call the violin technique. <laughs> And I came up with this because uh, I used to play the violin when I was younger. <laughs> and so I tuck it under my chin like a violin and I use my hands. So I'll show you that. There we go.
So then I put it to cool. I'm gonna use cool air. There we go. Man, mm. what my sweat. <laughs> no, one time, uh, one of my client's husband um, asked if he could uh, sit in on the groom and watch because um, he had a couple Westies and most groomers got their Westies done hour, hour and a half at the most. It took me three, four hours, you know, like more than twice the time. So, <laughs> I guess he wanted, he wanted to see what was taking so long. So he sat in and watched me groom his dogs and I was sweating. He goes, June, you're sweating. <laughs> like, it was, like it was a total shock to him. You know, I was like, of course I'm sweating. You know, <laughs> it's work. Anyways, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Lisa Moses says, June, don't get your hair sucked into the end of the dry. It hurts. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, uh, but I have it tied up, so. Uh, oh. Ari, I've never seen a dog so good for getting his face dry. Well, you know, we've been, uh, Sebastian and I have known each other for a while. Uh, Jay Chung, it's Sebastian. I remember him from, yeah, right? Okay, so I agree with you, Ari. Um, Lisa Moses says, uh, so definitely make sure, oh, so definitely make sure not to use the hottest temp on the dryer. It will burn the dog. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're going to use handheld, make sure to use medium and cool setting. Exactly. So I use the warm setting and then I, I finish with the cool air, the cool setting. So June, I'm so inspired by your channel. I'm thinking about starting one too. You, Okay, so here's the thing. Inspiration only comes to us because we have what it takes to actually make it a reality. That's the only reason why inspirations come to us. Um, I forget who said it, but they said that an average person has like five ideas that would change their life on their way to work. But the reason why no one actually acts on any of the ideas that we get is because we think to ourselves, I thought of it, it must not be any good. You know, we doubt ourselves. but. Um, if you have the inspiration, Nicole, um, to start your own grooming channel, I say do it. And I'm more than happy to give you some ideas. Um, you know, I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> I, I can tell you exactly what not to do. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, here's another one. Les Brown says that on your deathbed, all the inspiration and ideas that came to you, they're going to be standing around your deathbed and with angry eyes saying, we came to you. You could have given us life but now we all have to die with you. You know, oh my God, I just got chills. 
you know, the thought of that scares me to death. So that's why even though I'm scared that I'm going to get ridiculed or criticized or people are going to say I suck and things like that, I still do it because I don't want to end up on my deathbed having to answer to all those angry inspirations that came to me, angry at me that I didn't do anything. Um, Shamika, June, you never answered my question about shedding. Uh, okay, what was the question about shedding? Uh, could you ask it again, Shamika? Because um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know what the question was. Alrighty. I'm running out of batteries, so I'm gonna put my charger in. And now all we have to do is just some light trimming to finish up, because like I said, it's just a bath today, it's not a full drum. So, there we go. <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is clip and file his nails, because um, before I trim around his paws, I wanna make sure those nails are nice and short. And yeah, yeah, I don't even need to clip them. On these front nails I do. You're okay, buddy. There we go. Just the tips, because we're gonna file them anyways. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> so now with uh, nail filing, I like to use a side-side middle method, and this was taught to me by Barbara Johnston. She has a um, pet salon called Swanky Paws in Lawrenceville. But here we go. So you want to do side, the other side, and then down the middle, just like that. And then you have a nice filed nail. So again, we're going to do one side, and then do the other side, and then the middle. Like that. One side, the other side, middle. See that? So, that's why it's called the side side middle technique. <laughs> Sorry to get so technical with you guys, these uh, technical terms. I'm sorry about that, Sebastian. Alrighty. Got a little close to his nerve there. You're yeah, okay. <laughs> but see, it didn't, I didn't actually make it bleed. It's just expose the quick. So the reason why you want to expose the quick, the nerve, is because uh, if you don't expose the nerve, then the nail, the nerve is going to keep growing out with the nail. And then it gets to a point where the nerve has grown out so far that you can't really get it trimmed down too short. So <clears throat> by exposing the nerve, it's gonna stimulate it, kind of tickle it, and make it draw back into the paw. So that's why we wanna expose the nerve every time. <coughs> You're okay, buddy. And obviously it makes him feel a little funny about it. There we go. Side, side, middle, side. The other side, in the middle. You're okay, Sebastian. There we go. I'm sorry about that, buddy. Okay, Sebastian, I'm sorry about that. You're doing so good. Okay. And I think Obviously, <laughs> obviously, we're not going to stop filing the other nails, but I think just taking a moment to stop and acknowledge that he was scared, I think it goes such a long way for the dog just to stop for a second and say, hey, I'm sorry about that. I know it's scary. You're doing so good, Sebastian. Thank you. Just acknowledging, you know, sometimes a thank you just goes such a long way. There you are. There we 
Gun. <clears throat> now for my favorite part, scissoring. Okay, so <clears throat> I like to start with the legs first, with the back legs. Oh, did Shmika ever re-ask the question? Alrighty. Okay, Shmika. Yes, my Eva sheds a lot, even after she's groomed by professionals. And I do basic grooming every day. And she's not that old, only three. What's your opinion? Uh, my opinion is uh, she probably needs to get carded out. Get an uh, undercoat rake and card out that rough hairs. Um, that would be my suggestion. Okay. Carmen, that takes long. Yeah, I guess so. But again, my, I'm, I'm not a fast groomer, and anybody that wants a fast groomer, I tell them, go call somebody else. Uh, Shimika, what breed is your dog? Um, so he's a Bichon, supposedly, but to me, he looks like a Maltese. Okay. Uh, fear. Carmen says fear. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that's in reference to, but... All right. Fear me, maybe? Fear you? I don't know. Okay. But yeah, anytime uh, even a client starts to complain too much about how long it's taking, I let them know um, I'm more than happy to never come back again, you know? And I'm serious about that. I walk away because if they don't understand why I need to take my time, then they don't understand why I am grooming dogs, why I do this, why I choose to do this as a profession. You know, I'm a philosopher but I groom as a profession. <laughs> and the reason why I groom as a profession is because I actually want to make a meaningful difference in the lives of these pets. And if they are not going to allow me to do that, then, you know, I don't want to groom their dog. All right. Uh, grooms by Nicole. Thank you for your support, June. I'm gonna do it, yeah, exactly. And Nicole, seriously, um, uh, you know what, email me, and then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make sure. My wife is actually the one who checks all the emails at June the Groomer, um, at gmail.com, because I just don't have time. Uh, and she does all the admin anyways, the scheduling and all that. But um, just, if Nicole put re, um, you know, as the, as the subject line, put re YouTube channel, and I'll tell my wife to keep an eye out for it, and that way, um, she'll let me know when you email, and then I'll answer any question you have. Alrighty. I'll even give your channel a shout out. How about that? <laughs> On my channel and all my social media platforms, I'll give your channel a shout out. That way it won't take you as long as it took me to get subscribers. You know, hopefully it'll give you a nice boost. I hear you, Sebastian. It's still rough there. That's why. Okay, so we're going to trim his feet. Okay, so what I like to do is trim the bottom of the feet first. That way we get any stray hairs from the bottom. And then that'll give us a nice little outline, nice little shape when I put the foot back down. <clears throat> and you, I just want to do... Okay. Oh, wait, we're back. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. My wife called. Um... Fear stops you from being the best. Oh, yes, yes, Carmen, that's what you were saying. Um, wow, we still have five people watching. <laughs> Sorry about the interruption, guys. My wife called me. Uh, you know, she has dinner ready and everything, so I had to talk to my wife. She's, my wife is the most important. You know, my family is the most important thing to me. Most important uh, part of my life is my family, so, you know, when my wife calls, I have to drop everything and talk to her. So Sorry about the interruption. But um, so far we've got this back leg uh, outlined, and all I'm doing is just scissoring the outline here. So maybe you can see better here like this. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Maybe that's... Oh. Okay, there we go. So, let me pull them up a little bit. There we go. So, see like here how the hair sticks out a little bit? So I'm just gonna trim that down for him. Just like that. That way it doesn't stick out so much. All right? 
and then trim these hairs that are sticking out. And then we'll round that feet, the foot. No, I'm not going to do overboard. I'm not going to go overboard and do like too much scissoring <coughs> because, again, you know, it's just a bath and a neaten up today, not a full haircut. Let me take this off here. Okay, so we'll do this other foot. So, <clears throat> carpenters have a good rule. Measure twice, cut once. And I think that's, that translates into grooming. Comb twice, cut once. Actually, in grooming is comb a thousand times, cut once. <laughs> Now that leg, oh, sorry, <clears throat> let me go over here, do it at this angle. There we go. There we go. So even though this is not supposed to be like a full haircut, I still want to shape him up so that he's nice and presentable. That way, again, because I'm an artist <laughs> and I want to be proud of my work and, you know, art has always has that element of generosity to it. So even though they're not paying me extra for like a haircut, you know, I'm going to at least trim up, you know, just a little enough, enough to make it look nice. Is this not plugged in right? Why does it say I have low batteries? Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm not sure why, but um, my charger is not charging my batteries. <laughs> so rather than just cut it off unexpectedly, I'll just uh, end it here, give you a nice little final shot of Sebastian. See how, oh my goodness, see how silky smooth he is? Oh man. And so we got this foot so far, when we just need to do this foot. And see these two feet back here, we already got. So they're nice and trimmed. I shaped up the back legs a little bit here. See that? All righty. So there we go. <clears throat> oh, Carmen says, oh, Carmen says, have a good night, everyone. Nicole, good luck with your new channel. Yes. And then uh, um, thank you so much, Carmen, for joining us. I really appreciate your time, Carmen. Thank you so much. Uh, the alligator gamer, even though the live stream is ending, I have made it. Oh, you didn't miss anything, alligator. Just probably one of the most inspirational live streams I've ever done in my entire life. Just ideas were just coming and just flowing into my, <laughs> I just kidding. Anyways, I'll end it here, guys. Oh, Sebastian, you're almost done. Oh, let me turn. You're almost done. Oh, all right. I'll let you down, buddy. I just got to finish up that foot and we'll let him down. Bye. Oh, Nicole. Bye, Nicole. Nicole, seriously, take me up on my offer. I'm, I'm, I'm totally down to help. I want to pay it forward. So I'll see you guys. Good night. What? <laughs>